As our investigation into the West Virginia State Police continues, Eyewitness News has another exclusive update for you. Sources close to the probe have provided us with copies of emails between the agency's upper brass concerning the late February pending arrest of Corporal, jo uh, Corporal Joseph Comer. As we first told you, Comer is a whistleblower who penned the letter detailing questionable state police behavior. And that letter eventually served as the impetus to launch an investigation into the agency. Eyewitness News lead investigative reporter Kenny Bass unveils the emails tonight. They paint a picture of a leadership team which seemed very anxious to get Comer in custody. West Virginia State Police Corporal Joseph Comer remains on administrative leave from the agency. He was in the midst of a grievance process about his demotion from sergeant to corporal, and he's also charged with felony strangulation and misdemeanor battery, which allegedly took place in December during custody swaps with the mother of his child. Comer turned himself in for arrest on February 24th, the day of his administrative hearing over being demoted. Comer has since withdrawn his complaint and now intends to sue the agency. This has been going on for a while, but it's like a, it's like an onion. It just keeps some of the layers just keep coming off. Eyewitness News has exclusively attained emails circulated among high-ranking members of the West Virginia State Police, which detail their efforts to arrest and incarcerate Comer prior to his scheduled hearing. The information that I have now received shows that this thread of people um, was doing anything and everything that they could to try to get something against Corporal Comer in order to destroy his reputation, to, to destroy his career, to stop him from testifying at that level four hearing. On Thursday, February 23rd at 10.09 p.m., a day before Comer's scheduled hearing, Troop 1 Commander Captain G.L. Stoniker, who retired last month, said Comer's sergeant called Comer and told him to come to the Parkersburg detachment. They told him they needed to serve a DVP. There was no mention of the warrant for Comer's arrest. Four minutes later, Stoniker messaged again, will advise when in custody en route to the regional jail. But Comer did not show up. Major Ed Whitmire, the North Chief of Field Services, then offered at 11.16 p.m., do we need to ping his cell? Stoniker replied, probably would help. Major J.T. Finley, the professional standards director, added, I agree. At 11.35 p.m., Widmeyer said approximately what time was they expecting him at detachment? Have BOLOs, which stands for Be on the Lookouts, put out on both trucks, Troop 1 and 4. If his truck isn't home, let's get that tag and check LPRS. Those are license plate readers. Finley responded at 11.39 p.m. Everyone needs to be extremely cautious when they encounter him. It won't be the Joey they are accustomed to. I can only imagine his state of mind. It appears that they were trying to set Corporal Comer up to possibly get shot. Sergeant Kiefer, the one that they sent to go pick him up at nearly midnight, was not told about the DVP and was not told about the warrants. But he was told to tell Corporal Comer to arm himself with his service revolver and that he was to transport him at midnight to the Parkersburg detachment. So why, the question arises, why would they tell him to arm himself when they are going to arrest him for a supposed violent felony 30 minutes later? Just after midnight at 12.50 a.m. on Friday, February 24th, Stoniker messaged, they denied the ping because of no threat today. Efforts to find Comer that night were unsuccessful. In a separate email, former Superintendent Colonel Jan Cahill messaged Fenley saying, I think you may already have this, but have ready for me a chronological timeline action taken regarding Vicki. That's Trooper Vicki Mara, the mother of Comer's child, accusing him of domestic violence from her first contact with us through Huddleston's letter. That refers to a February 17th letter by First Sergeant K.W. Huddleston. The letter said he was contacted by Mara, who was under his command in early January. She accused Comer of domestic assault and domestic battery and said Comer was following her, which made her uncomfortable because of his violent tendencies. Despite those statements, there was no attempt to contact or arrest Comer until the night before his scheduled hearing. First Sergeant Huddleston, who signed the criminal complaint warrant for the strangulation, he was assigned by Colonel Cahill uh, and, and Major Finley to investigate this 
and it began, his journal, his statement began on January 9th where he was speaking with Trooper Mara, the alleged victim here in the strangulation. His, his interviews with her continued from January 9th all the way to February 17th. Nothing ever, ever was in there about strangulation. In email messages in the early morning of February 24th, the day of the hearing and the day Comer turned himself in, Huddleston wrote Finley, I am thinking we maybe need to start thinking about having something in place tomorrow when, if he shows up. Finley replied, yes, he be here at 0900. I'll be here. I can pull him and his attorney and have it taken care of, place on admin leave when served DVP, and then do warrant after everything secured. He continued, timing of it is horrible. Huddleston replied, yes, optics will suck, but it is what it is. But that plan was thwarted when accompanied by his attorney, Comer surrendered to authorities in Jackson County. We now jump forward two days to February 26th at 6.39 p.m. Huddleston references an eyewitness news story about the situation in a message to Fenley. See this one? How did they know there were warrants? DVP. Seems like he is admitting to disobeying an order and the attorney possibly obstructing. Prosecutor thinks so too. Obvious info was getting passed that night. At 6.42, Huddleston said, pisses me off. Finley responded, I know. I've been replaying it in my head all weekend. I'll call you in the morning. With this Eyewitness News investigation, I'm Kenny Bass. And we reached out to the state police about whether those emails represent standard operating procedure. We also wanted to know about the status of Corporal Comer's administrative hearing. A member of Governor Jim Justice's administration tells us Superintendent Jack Chambers could not comment because the FBI is looking into the Comer situation and actively surrounding it. We contacted the FBI about the agency's possible involvement. A spokesperson tells us, as a matter of policy, the FBI does not comment on investigations. Corporal Comer is still on paid administrative leave and remains free on the strangulation and battery charges he's facing after posting a $30,000 bond.